The only incident I can remember which occurred while my mother continued on Mr. Newman's farm was the appearance one day of my father with his head bloody and his back lacerated. He was beside himself with mingled rage and suffering. The overseer had brutally assaulted my mother when my father sprang upon him like a tiger. In a moment the overseer was down and mastered by rage, my father would have killed him but for the entreaties of my mother and the overseer's own promise that nothing should ever be said of the matter. The promise was kept, like most promises of the cowardly and the base, as long as the danger lasted. Josiah Hansen was known as being a good slave. He enjoyed doing the best that he could, even if it was for the owner's gain. At 15 years of age, there were few who could compete with me in work or sport. I was as lively as a young buck and running over with animal spirits. I could run faster, wrestle better, and jump higher than anybody about me. At an evening shakedown in our or our neighbor's kitchen, my feet became absolutely invisible from the rate at which they moved. All this caused my master and my fellow slaves to look upon me as a wonderfully smart prophecy. The great things I should do when I become a man. My vanity became vastly inflamed and I fully coincided in their opinion. One word of the commendation from the petty despot who ruled over us would set me up for a month. When Josiah Henson was just a small child, he remembered his mother being molested by an overseer. His father tried to come to her rescue and tried to attack the overseer. He was subsequently captured after fleeing and had his ear cut off and terribly beaten. This showed Josiah from an early age how rough a slave's life was. The normal day of a slave consisted of two meals a day, breakfast at 12 p.m. after their morning laboring, and then supper after the rest of their laboring was done. During the harvest season, however, they had three meals. Meals were usually cornmeal and salt herrings. In summer, they were given more buttermilk and any vegetables they could muster for themselves on their own small truck patch. The clothes they were given were towel cloth and pantaloons. In winter, they were given an overcoat, but nothing fancy. Josiah Henson's first duties as a slave were carrying pails of water, and when he was old enough, he was promoted to doing a man's work. Growing up and through his life, slaves were housed in terrible conditions. They were lodged in log huts and on the bare ground. If someone had a wooden floor, it was considered a huge luxury. This was usually saved for house servants. This is impossible for, for people of our social status to think about, because wooden floors seems a necessity. The beds they had were made up of straw, boards, rags, and one blanket. Josiah's favorite way of sleeping was on a board with a cozy blanket enveloping him. The sad and terrible thing about this was that children are born in these conditions. They were growing up neglected and sick because they were living in complete filth. Some kids ended up alone because family members were separated at the auction blocks. For Josiah Henson, his mother had to plead and beg with the slave owner to let her keep at least one of her sons with her. Josiah Henson showed faith in his owner his entire life. So, when he heard that freedom was up for grabs for anyone who wanted it, he felt like he owed something to his owner. He figured the only, way, the only fair way to gain freedom was to buy it. He agreed a fee of $300. After saving up to get his money, his owner pr raised the price to $1,000. Outraged and astonished by the lack of faith shown in him in return by his owner, Josiah Henson took his wife and kids and escaped. In 1830, Josiah Henson led a small group of escaped slaves to Dresden, now known as Ontario, a small settlement in Canada. He became an Episcopal Methodist preacher and was the main character for the book Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe. Stowe was inspired after reading Henson's autobiography. Henson became well known after it was revealed he was the inspiration for the book. Josiah Henson paved the way for many slaves to escape. A modern day example would be Lakshmi Swami, a Sri Lankan woman lured by a housekeeper's job. She was beaten daily with an electric cord and held behind bars. She escaped after four years and went around with a global organization to free housekeepers treated as slaves and took them to a better place. Josiah Henson suffered familiar treatment as a slave and after escaping, he led a group of fugitive slaves to a settlement in Canada.